start. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. What of the day is to start? That's correct. It is time to start. Okay, Mr. Start. President, uh, Mr. President Officer, over to you. Welcome, fellow members. And well, I guess we don't have guests tonight, but welcome to our Southwest Project Management Toastmaster meeting. So we have a very friendly club where we project managers and program managers and leaders in different disciplines, we can practice and improve our speaking skills and our leadership skills in a very warmly and friendly environment. So let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Everybody got it? I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag. The flag. The flag. The United, United States, States of America, of America. America. And to and the, the Republic, Republic of for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Justice. justice. All right. okay. Welcome, welcome, everybody. And our mission of this club is to empower our members to become, become better communicators and better leaders. So our speakers come to learn and to improve and to grow and share their wisdom with all of us because we have so many wise people in this group so the theme the theme of the of tonight meeting is new beginnings i guess many of you are sending your kids for a new school year new grade some of you are sending your kids to college starting college some of you are starting new jobs or new positions at jobs so we are going to celebrate any sort of new beginning that you may have in your life Actually, I'm celebrating that my wife is starting a new job in about a week. So it's a new beginning for us as a family, too. And very soon we will be hearing a little bit more about uh, the word of the day from our grammarian. And with that, I am going to invite our Toastmasters, that is not Boriel, but the VP of Education of this club, Jorge Alba, to start the meeting. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Presiding <laughs> Officer. So it's a, really a great honor for me to be performing tonight as a Toastmaster of this very incredible club. And it's really a privilege to be here tonight. So we are going to, as we usually do, start with our prepared speeches. And we are going to have two of our newest members doing their icebreaker tonight. So it's going to be a, a nice of initiation of new beginnings, actually, for them as a Toastmasters with their prepared speeches. Then we go in the second part of the meeting into the table topics round where our new members can practice and speak. Well, new members and all members, all of us can practice and speak on our feet. And this round of impromptu speeches uh, give us the opportunity to improve and to think fast. So it's a very important area of the Toastmaster group. And finally, we'll go into what I consider the most important aspects of our meeting, which is the evaluation round, because it is where our evaluators actually provide us with information and guidelines and clues of what we can do better, what where we can improve, or what we did right. So that is very important, but it's not only to prepare our speeches, to participate in the impromptu speakers, but also to improve every day. So as the Toastmaster of the day, my duty is to introduce the group of people that is going to be helping me tonight. So we will have our general evaluator, and I am going to let the general evaluator introduce the evaluation team. Our general evaluator for tonight is no other than, who's our general evaluator? <laughs> Upai Kalu. Upai Kalu. Upai was the one who signed for General Evaluator. At the last minute, thank you, Pai, <laughs> for signing up for General Evaluator. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. And good evening, uh, uh, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, tonight, I'm serving as a General Evaluator. And as a General Evaluator, I'm going I'm to be working with a seasoned uh, professional who will be helping to make sure that this meeting is properly conducted. Uh, to help me in uh, serving in this uh, role of uh, functional, 
I would like to introduce uh, the first person in the team, which is a grammarian in the person of uh, Carol. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. As the grammarian, it is my responsibility to listen to our phrases, our talks, what, how we use the language and to recognize instances in which we use it in an exceptionally attractive way. Of course, that's subjective. However, it is something that can expand our vocabulary and our understanding of the language when we use it like that. We, I also will be listening for those who will say the word of the day. And the word of the day is start. I've just now looked up the, the definition of that word and it means begin or to be reckoned from a particular point in time or space such as the season starts in September. It can also mean to happen or come into being, such as the fire started in the building's upper floor. It is also, as a noun, a sudden movement of surprise or alarm. She woke with a start. I think with our theme as new beginnings, the first two definitions of the word as verbs, meaning happen or come into being or begin or be reckoned from a particular point in time or space are the two that are most critical use of this word for to tie in with our theme of the day, which is new beginnings. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you so much. Madam Grammaria, moving forward, uh, we need someone also to help us in the R counting. And uh, we have uh, to serve in that role as the R counter, uh, John Ademo. Can you let us know what you'll be doing as the R counter? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Good evening. Uh, Fellow Toastmasters, uh, I don't think we have a guest uh, in our midst this evening. <laughs> My role as the air counter is to count the number of unnecessary signs or repetitive words you may use when you are speaking. I will be observing and taking note of words such as ah, uh, um, ah. Uh, so, but, and, well, you know, these are filler words that affect the effectiveness of a speech. I will present my report when called upon by the general evaluator. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Alcanta. And uh, also to help us uh, to start this meeting on time and to end it on time, uh, we'll have a timer and uh, Avi will be the one taking up that role. Avi, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you'll be doing as timer? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Good evening, everybody. One of the success factors of being a leader as well as in management is to maintain time or keep track of time. Tonight, I would be helping you out to keep track of the same. Well, as a timer, my responsibility is to flash three kinds of cards tonight. Green, yellow, and red. There are three segments that requires time management. Prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluation. We have two speakers tonight who will be speaking for five to seven. So when it's five minutes, I'm going to flash a green background, six minutes yellow. And when it's seven minutes, I'm going to flash a red. You have 30 seconds to wrap up your speech when it's red. In case of table topics, one to two minutes. One for green, one and a half for yellow, and two for red. Now evaluators, 
will also be flashed with three cards. When it's two minutes, we'll be flashing a green, two and a half for yellow, and red when it's three. In all cases, when it's red, you have 30 seconds to wrap up. All the best, everybody. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Timer. And uh, the last but not the least is the one to help us to be motivated as we are acknowledged and recognized in our ballot counting. I like to introduce uh, Aki Oni, who will be serving as our ballot counter. Can you tell us what you'll be doing? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters. As your ballot counter tonight, I want to encourage you. The word of the day is start. As you start, think about the end. That way, I will be very pleased to include your name on my ballot sheet. Because if you don't qualify, according to Mr. Timer, you will not be able to be voted for. So start. Start and start with the end in mind. And then by doing so, you realize that you will be able to be counted and voted for. I will collect all ballots electronically. I push it through. And then I will tally the results and I will pass it on to Mr. Uh, to Christina so that she can do a magic with certificates. And then I will pass it on to the presiding officer as well, uh, Toastmaster Ohe Alba. With that said, I'll turn it back to Mr. General Evaluator. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ballot Counter. Uh, for me, as the general evaluator for tonight's uh, meeting, my role is uh, simple, is uh, for me to evaluate anything and everything about this meeting from the start to the end. So at the end of uh, the uh, presentation, the speeches, I'll be back to give my report as uh, other functionaries will uh, do the same. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Mr. General Evaluator, and thank you to all the Toastmaster members that are participating tonight with any role. Uh, we have a great team of evaluators, and these people are going to make this a great meeting. So it's time to start with our prepared speeches tonight. So the first speaker of the evening our first speaking tonight is Christina Sinclair. She began her Toastmaster career with Southwest Project Management Club this past March. So she is really a newbie. <laughs> she is already making a big difference in this club. She is also the sergeant at arms of the club. Her pathway path is presentation mastery, level one, and her, tonight is actually her uh, writing a speech with a purpose. Comcast Technology Center is both the tallest building and one of the largest structures in Philadelphia, standing 1,121 feet tall and spanning over 1.5 million square feet of interior space. It's a huge building. It was completed in 2017. It's a super tall stand building of 60 stories high and features office space in the lower floors and hotels in the upper levels with a nice observation deck at the top. I'm really dying to go and meet that place one day. It was Christina's first architectural project, so it's very dear to her heart, and her speech will take us on a journey on how she overcame her design challenges to make this project a success. Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Let me share my screen. Okay, everyone can see my screen? Perfect. Well, good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Um, has anyone encountered any obstacles that you had to take a risk? Show of hands. You know, I think everyone should show their hands because what are we doing now? 
we're taking a risk. We're taking a risk in doing Toastmasters. So everyone is taking a risk. The risk architecture industry is very common for taking risks. There's always obstacles that you might face and a lot of risk involving cost, money, budget, and time. A lot what project managers do, they have to think about. Risk plus planning is a way to effectively mitigate the risk. Here, you could see a little of examples of how people didn't properly plan, if you notice. My first job, I started, I worked at Kendall Heaton. And what we did was we did, we were considered architect of record, meaning there's another architecture firm that designs the building, brings it to us, and we dissect it and make sure we bring their vision to life. We look at the technical details, we deal with the contractor as and go through the whole construction process while they sit back and relax with the owner. My first job by myself to manage solo was this cafe. This cafe, even though it's very, very small in perspective of the whole building, brings wonderful memories and stressful memories of my time working on it. What I was given was the architect wanted an indoor outdoor cafe kiosk that was very slim, sleek, as a, and a beautiful object to display, but it didn't, they didn't want to take away from the general lobby area because they shared a cafe, they shared another space below that was a beautiful sky garden that they didn't want to take away. So I was giving these examples, these drawings to work with. So as I began drawing them out, I noticed certain things that could improve. However, since I was new and green, I felt like I wasn't qualified. However, I treated this as if I was presenting an argument to my parents of why I wanted to do something. I had to get make sure I had a reason and support to back it up. So what I did was be, I looked at, I noticed that they wanted to have a project, uh, a receptacle on top of the counter. I looked at it and I thought, well, it kind of took away from their whole idea and their vision. And they wanted some bulky item. I looked up the item, the item wasn't there. So what I end up doing was I looked at under counter receptacles. Even though this idea isn't new, it was new in their perspective of changing their design. So what I did was I, looked up and researched the different products that they wanted to have on top of the counter and what they wanted on below. With that, I made sure I put reasons of why they wanted, what the effects of, if they were to have it on the top of the counter, they would have to drill two holes, plus a third one to route the wiring inside. Then versus the other one where you only had to drill in one hole. So I made sure to show pros and cons and I showed it to my boss. He then showed it and he presented that to the owner and designer. And in the end, they went with this idea of having it underneath the counter. Even though this little item was so small and tiny in perspective, when, I'll, when anyone who goes there, 
I could say that I, you know, had an influence in that particular area of that work. So I felt very proud of myself for going outside the box because normally not many people would do that, especially at the beginning stage. So this is me at the, at the job site, I got to go visit it. And the quote that I wanna leave everyone today is, take the risk. The worst that it can happen is that it doesn't happen. But if it does, you're in for an adventure of a lifetime. So I challenge everyone to, you know, at least take one risk, whether it's one day or once a month or once a week, do something that's outside of the norm and see what happens. You never know. It could be good or it could be bad. But thank you very much. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Uh... Great presentation, great presentation. As I told you, she was going to do great <laughs> tonight with her icebreaker. Um, so give us a, a minute to send uh, comments to Christina. Uh, Mr. Timer, if you can give us one minute while we all send comments to Christina on the chat, please. Are we complete with the time, Mr. Timer? Yes, we are good. One minute, sorry, Mike. Okay, it's perfect. Good. Thank you very much, thank you. So now we are ready to start again with our second speaker of the evening, Soma Shoma Charter G. I hope I pronounced it right and didn't kill your last name. Is working as a GIS specialist at the city of Sugarland for the last three years. Soma graduated with a master's degree in urban planning from San Jose State University in California, and she is living in the greater Houston area with her family since 2012. Shoma joined our Toastmaster Club also last month, and she is here tonight starting her Toastmaster path, doing her icebreaker toward her pathway on presentation mastery. So Shoma is going to give us a four to six minutes speech titled Recapitulating a Journey of My Life. So Shoma, we are all ears for you. Thank you. Good, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. And good evening to everybody. And good evening, thank, and good evening to all my fellow Toastmaster friends here. I'm Shoma Chatterjee, and today I'll be giving my icebreaker speech here. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for listening to me. And I would like to say that joining the Toastmaster Club, I think, I, I not think, I believe that this is a best decision, one of the best decisions that I have taken in my life. I strongly believe that um, Joining Toastmaster will be helping me to improve my communication skill, both in my personal and professional life. So today, through my icebreaker speech, I will share some memorable events that happened in my life. Um, 
to me memorable in memorable journey is not just the destination or reaching the destination but the memorable moments or uh, that our memorable experience that we gather throughout our journey so first first thing first to start my journey i would like to say that i i born and brought up in in a suburban area in uh, city of calcutta which is in india so calcutta kolkata is my hometown where i spent all my childhood my school days my college days and i am the only child of my parents even though i grew up in a joint family where i used to live with my grandparents my uncle aunts and my cousin i know nowadays joint family is not a very common idea but i can tell you from my own experience that living in a joint family there are so many incentives and one of the best incentive i think that um we never if if somebody is living in a joint family he or she will not not feel bored because there will always someone with whom you can either talk or play so as a kid we used to have playmates at our home and that was a blessing to us that's why we always like to spend our time outdoor activities we used to play with our cousin outdoor in this way we were not playing video games and we were also not surfing internet so that was my uh, and i did my schooling in a public school and i went to same school from kindergarten to high school and then i went to college after finishing my college i got married and i moved to usa my husband was doing his phd at university of iowa so i moved here in iowa in 2005 so moving from iowa from kolkata to iowa it was a big cultural and also an environmental change on me in kolkata we used to see monsoon six seasons however when i came to iowa i i mostly encountered summer and winter very small fall like very limited amount of time for fall or autumn season however one memorable incident is that first time in my life i encountered white christmas the christmas time was fully white covered with snow that was an amazing experience in my life and i would say if any of you never been to iowa during the winter time never played with snow or never traveled in a countryside or drive around the countryside or never saw a sunrise in a winter chilly winter morning over snow then probably you, are, you guys are missing something the winter in iowa was very cold but it was amazingly beautiful um during our stay over there we made several new friends some of them become our life lifetime friends we still in very good contact with them probably they are they after after their study they might be living in different part of us or not even us they may in different part of this world but still so with some of them we are still connected and after finish and and also we did another thing during the summer time and also during the winter vacation we visited many big uh, midwest cities such as minneapolis chicago st louis um st louis yeah and then after four years after finishing our college uh, my husband got a job in san francisco bay area so we moved from iowa to california in 2008 again there is a move there is a new start So again, moving from Iowa, a countryside, from Iowa City, which is a like a very small university town, to San Francisco Bay Area, it was a huge, huge difference. Because San Francisco Bay Area, it's a, like a big metropolitan area with lots of activity, and California is such a vibrant state where one day you can spend your time at the beach, and the next time you can plan a trip for like a ski ski diving, similar to that. after moving 
to California, I joined university, San Jose State University to pursue my master's in urban planning. At that time, I was very busy, but life was very beautiful over there. And one new thing happened to our life that our parents came there in California to visit us after a long period, like after five years. And along with them, we visited several um, national park, like for example, Yosemite National Park, Lake, Lake Tahoe, Grand Canyon. Those are like big experiences like. And then we also visited nearby big cities like LA, Los Angeles, San Diego. And also we went to Las Vegas. And in 2009, another big thing happened. It's like a life-changing event happened to us. My daughter was born over there in Mountain View, California. So I finished my study in around 2000, the end of 2011. And after finishing my graduate degree, we decided to move to Houston uh, for a better job opportunity. So in 2012, at the end of 2012, we moved from California to Houston. And after moving Houston, many incidents happened with our life. It changed our life so much. Um, some of them, uh, I will always kind of say like uh, major changes happened that we bought our first home here in the greater Houston region. I started my professional career in 2013 as a GIS professional. And we have our son in 2014. So we got our tech son here. And then, after that, um, our parents also again came here to visit us. And then in 2018, we, make a, we made a family trip to Big Bend National Park. That was also a very amazing trip that we, family trip that we did. And those memories will always kind of stay with us. And each year in my home, I celebrate Diwali and Thanksgiving with my friends, families, neighbors, uh, and this is this is kind of a ritual I have I had started since I bought my home. My son, he is going to elementary school now, and my daughter will be joining high school pretty soon. So I am hoping that life will gonna make again some big changes to me, and I'm waiting for that. I'm anticipating that everything will be doing. Uh, would be going to a right way. Uh, so these are some of the memorable events that happened in my life and which I'm glad to share with you all. I hope you all enjoyed listening to my story as much as I enjoyed telling to you all. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Shoma. Thank you very, very, very much for sharing with us those interesting stories of your life from your from your childhood all your way to adulthood. And I'm sure that many of us here tonight will identify 100% with your experience because we are also immigrants. So we have been on your choose too. So Mr. Timer, can you please give us one minute so we can uh, send comments to Shoma? Time. You're on mute. Thank you, Mr. Diamond. Sorry about that. Yes, I will say that if everybody has sent their comments to Shoma, we can proceed uh, to the second part of our meeting tonight. 
and that will be the table topic. Um, so I'm going to give uh, the floor to our table topics master to start this portion of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Good evening, fellow masters. Before we jump into the table topic, I want to briefly describe my role today and how table topic will flow. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to bring up a few questions to you. And for the, on the theme of today, the new beginnings. And please volunteer. If not, then I will randomly call on members of the audience to enter, answer the questions I will, I'm going to propose. And uh, uh, just be uh, remind that uh, the speech will, uh, the speaker will need uh, one to two minutes, so one minute to qualify, and then uh, don't go over um, two and a half minutes. Um, our theme today, like uh, um, the Toastmaster side, is uh, the new beginning, is a fresh start, and I really like uh, so much story um, telling us all the fresh start she had, and also um, Christina too, right? So um, how they encounter all their first job, first baby, and the new environment, new homes, all, first house, all the stuff, uh, good fresh start. And also uh, sometimes um, we have a fresh start, it also mean a chance to do something again. And this usually happens when things didn't turn out as they had hoped. And it feels like as if everything was messed up. And in the most cases, it is possible, it is not possible to cancel or destroy what had happened in the past, but you can still have a new beginning. And because you are going to have a mindset shift. So it, it requires changing the way that you think about whatever it is that you want to do over and try again. So I'm going to pose some questions in that angle. Um, basically, um, you have to be able to forgive yourself for the past mistakes and step boldly into the future. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to ask for the first volunteer who wants to try the first table topic. Uh, any volunteer? Michael, thank you. <laughs> That's great. So for our first table topic, if you can start a new beginning, which career will you choose? Will you do something different from what you are doing right now? Thank so you. If, Go ahead. Yeah, do you want me to repeat the question or you got it? I, I got a question. Okay. Thank you, Mother Table Topic Master. If I was to pick a career, another one, another career from what I'm doing right now at the moment, the career I would like to pick is a tough one. Try to think about a career that would, that would fit what I would like to do. The career that I would like to do that we want to go into is counseling and you know, that I get to do with counseling or maybe administration, pastoring, go into all that. It is a reason being that I, would, I, don't want to, I don't want to call it a gift, but I have this passion to, to help people, to counsel people, to direct them in the right position, to guide them aright, to talk to them in the way they can, they, 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 that, in the way that they can uh, they can e easily flow with and forget about their concerns or whatever they're going through at that point in time. 
a lot of people do call me sometimes, reach out to me whenever they're going through any situation, be it marriage issue, career issue. For some reason, our, our, we always have something to tell them because of the grace of God that is upon my life. I always have something to tell them, to encourage them, and to, to bridge them together, something to give them, you know, to think about. A perfect example was when somebody came to me and said, Oh, my wife is this, my wife is that. This is what I'm going to do. The first thing I told him was, remember the day you got married and make sure you watch the tape of the video of when you got married. Watch that tape and see how you guys were joyful that day. See how you guys were happy. See how family members came around. There was a lot of drinking, a lot of dancing, a lot of celebration. You said, I do. And you told the woman, I cannot live without you. And she told you, she cannot live without without him. Just rewatch that tip again and see how that will change your life. So that's what I would like to do to be a counselor. Over to you, Madam Tepi Topic Master. Thank you. That's a very good uh, speech. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing. Um, I just remember something um, we didn't vote for the best speaker. Do you want to do it? Or we just keep conti continue? Okay. All right. Um, for the second speech, uh, who wants to be the volunteer? Second topic. Okay. I have Carol. You are muted. <clears throat> Thank you. No problem. Okay, so this question is, if you could be any age again for one week, which age you would you would be and why? Ah. <laughs> oh goodness, that is a hard one, Madam Toastmaster, Madam, Madam Table Topics Toastmaster, because I have, I've. I have a kind of a Pollyanna-ish bent to my life in that I have always been a happy person and there's so much that I enjoyed at every age. I guess if I were to go back and think about when was the what would I like to be again? <clears throat> I guess I'm going to say somewhere between 19 and 29. That decade of my life was wonderful, but that was the most active part of my life. I was completing my college and then I went into graduate school and then I got married and then I had my first child and then I had my second child. And I think then I moved from Houston to West Virginia and back. It was a very busy, active time. It's the kind of time in your life when you really don't have time to make memories because you're so busy doing. Your hands are always busy. But I remember that as a good time in my life. And if I had an opportunity to go back, I would be that particular decade, 19 to 29. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of choices, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you for sharing. All right. So uh, my next speech, I, I, do, do I still have time for yes, another? We, we have plenty okay. of time. Yes, we have Okay, time. great. So... I need a volunteer for a third question. Who wants to volunteer? Okay, Rafia. <laughs> Great, Rafia. <laughs> All right. So um, my question is, what are your hobbies and what hobby you would like to start to develop now? Uh, what's this, the last part of your question? Uh, what are your hobbies and what hobby 
you would like to start to have? To start, okay. Thank you, uh, Madam to uh, table, table Topic Master for asking that question. Uh, I had a lot of hobbies and most of my hobbies are close to nature. Uh, I like to have, I would like to go for gardening and I would like to work with the kids. It's a hobby, it's my hobby and eventually it came my profession as well. And I would like to do cooking for my kids and I would like to have healthy food. Uh, these are something that I'm constantly doing. I'm constantly doing for myself, for my family, for my kids. And something new is that I want to work on and I, I hope that I can start as early as possible is building up my more reading habit. This is something that I'm still kind of kind of behind. Uh, I like to do practical things. I would like to just cook, garden, or maybe sew something, something hands-on, but something that I have to sit and I have to, I have to do the reading. That is still, you know, like I still on my top of the list and I want to build that habit and my that hobby. So thank you so much. Back to you, Madam, uh, Madam Table Topic Master. <laughs> Thank you for Rafia. Um, I have a similar hobby as you are too, mm -hmm. like gardening and then cooking, walking, uh, traveling and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I also like to um, like to learn piano <laughs> at some time. <laughs> oh, I was what? sitting, I was always uh, watching how my girls play and they but I never did myself. So maybe at one time I want to start. <laughs> yeah, but it's a hard one. Anyways, so if I have time. Yeah, we, we have time for maybe one more. Okay, all right. So I will try to ask one last question. Uh, who wants to volunteer? Michael, you want to try again? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So imagine that you have a big fight with your loved one for something. What are you going to do to have a fresh start with them? Thank you, Marate, table topic, Master. If I do have a big fight with my loved one, what will I do to have a new beginning, a new start with them? If I have a fight with them, with my loved one, the first thing I'm going to do to have a new beginning with them is to invite them out for lunch so that we can talk over what transpired, how we can move on. I usually don't believe in the past. I believe in new beginning, start, starting over and moving, moving ahead bearing the past. So that's what I would do. First thing I would do, invite them out for lunch, we go to lunch, eat together. If they see mad at me, if they don't want to go to lunch with me, I'm going to keep inviting them. And if they refuse to come, then I will look for a mediator, somebody that was going to come to help, to help us bridge, a mediator to bridge the gap, to, to, re, to reconnect that relationship in order for us to start another to in order for us to start a new relationship that we can bury the past because if I don't let go, I won't be I won't be settled. I'll be bothered, I'll be troubled in my spirit. In order for me to have a, a new beginning in my spirit too, I need to let go by reaching out to them to start over again. Thank you, Ms. Madam Table Topic, and over to you. Thank you for the answer. Thanks. The reason I ask, because this happened on me <laughs> over the weekend. I had a big fight with my husband <laughs> over something. It's really, really small. <laughs> like he bought something, um, instant noodle. And I said, we have so many in our pantry. Why you get? another pack of instant noodle so one thing after another it's just building up <laughs> and it's really bad but anyways so i thought i want to ask you guys how you deal with that and then i also um read online and it kind of um um line up with what michael said 
So first, uh, I think, I guess, forget, forgive, be peaceful, accept, understand, <laughs> be positive, and change and focus. So that's what they suggested. But uh, I really like that you will take action, you will take the initiative, bring them to your house, and then discuss with them. So that's really good. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Oh, uh, does everybody qualify, Mr. Timer? Yes, yes. ma'am, everybody qualified. Great. So, okay. um, Back to you. Uh, Mr. Timer, could you also please, uh, I forgot to ask, do, do both speakers qualify? Unfortunately, only one speaker qualified, that is Christina. Soma was a little above 730. Okay, so I guess we don't need to have a ballot for speakers since only one qualified. Uh, so we won't be voting for best speaker of the evening, but we will be voting for best uh, table topic of the evening. Uh, do you want me to push it now? Yes, could you please push the ballot now? And okay. I think this is like a good time for that. Did everybody cast your vote? Going once, going twice. I guess we got all the votes in place. Thank you very much, Mr. Ballot Counter. So with this, um, we are actually at a good point. We are going to have now our Q&A section of the meeting that we introduced it uh, last meeting. So it's a time for all the participants to ask any question that you wish to ask to the speakers or to the table topic speakers or to anybody that has participated. Anything that comes to your mind that you want to clarify, this is the time to do it. So anybody who has any question, please raise your hand, let us know. I do. Okay, Christina, please go ahead. I wanna know, so one of the tabletop, I like the questions for the table topics, but I'm curious to know what, Jessica, what would you have done? What a career path would you have done instead? Um, thank you for the question. <laughs> so um, when I was in high school, um, my favorite subject is actually biology and especially about plan. So I always want to be, um, study the plan and then biology and those type of thing. So um, when I um, do, uh, you know, I was, I had my, uh, my education in China. So we have uh, like a, how to say, it's not like I say tea or anything, but it's a, a certain time in July in the summer, three days, we will do our exams. And after that, then based on our performance, then we will guess, oh, how much point I'm going to get. And then I'm going to um, apply for the schools. So I always want to go to a school that I can learn biology or plan about the trees or those type of things. But my parents always say, no, you won't be able to find a good job. So you need to do something engineering. <laughs> so yeah, if I have a chance, I want to be a gardener or maybe a designer for gardens and stuff. But no, I didn't have that opportunity, unfortunately. So right now I spend more time in my own garden. So <laughs> try to study that. So it's my hobby. <laughs> yeah, not my career. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for the question. <laughs> Christina, I do have a question for you. On the first or second slide on your presentation, mm -hmm. you have those uh, that escalator that finish on a wall, oh, yeah. and you have the name of the school. <laughs> the yeah, school that doesn't fit in the building. Do they really happen, or that's just a, a joke? On it, I mean, I looked online, but I didn't research. Um, I know the college for sure, but as far as the escalator, I don't know. I, I just looked up architecture gone wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of the two guys building the 
the Pisa Tower in Italy. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them noticed that he's leaning a little bit and he said to the other one, oh, don't worry, nobody's going to notice. <laughs> All right, do we have any more questions tonight? Nobody wants to ask anything. Okay, so with this, we are ready to start the part three of our meeting, which I consider one of the most important parts is our general evaluators. And this part is very useful because that's what you provide general or very experienced speakers and evaluators provide very good information and tips to the speakers on how to improve their speaker speaking capabilities and how to become a better speakers. So with this, uh, we are going to have two great general speech evaluators tonight. Speech evaluation, num speech evaluator number one is going to be Akin Oni. Akin. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. Christina Sinclair, congratulations for delivering this speech again tonight. Definitely, I noticed marked improvement in uh, what you presented tonight versus what you presented the last time. And I'm gonna evaluate you on uh, the methodology that I call the CDCS, which is content delivery, connection, and one standout. In terms of content, just like you did the last time, the visuals were actually better arranged. I, I like the arrangement, uh, the layout of the visuals. And again, as I uh, encouraged you the last time, you sim simplified a complex architectural masterpiece. Not many people can do that. It could have been more complex in terms of presentation of what you showed than uh, what you did but you decided to just uh, simplify it so that we could uh, understand at least follow you. Again, like I said the last time, the purpose of this is not to make us architects, but just to give us highlights of what happened. So thank you, very well done. And uh, you, you, you had um, adequate time. I mean, the content were adequate for the allotted time. You didn't go over, you, you stayed within the time. Of course, one or two drawings could have been left out of the presentation, but overall it was way better than the last time. In terms of delivery, you started with a question, which I really applaud you for. Has anyone encountered an obstacle by taking a risk? It's a way to draw the audience to yourself. Well done. And I noticed tonight that you used the good hand gesture even though we couldn't see everything, but occasionally we saw it, at least I did. So well done. And thanks for looking a little less at your notes than the last time. Uh, so that's the area where you need to continue to practice. And then you paused a lot more this time, but occasionally I found out that the pauses, uh, at least on two occasions, the pauses were a little longer than normal to the point that you are looking up. I see we forgot what you are gonna say next. So just watch out for that. Other than that, that was very good. In terms of a connection, of course, the value of the project that you showcased was relatable to all of us, particularly the cafe piece. Everybody likes to eat, as far as I know. So anybody will hear cafe and they're interested in what you're gonna talk about. So I thought that was very good. I mean, you told us about a project where a PMI sponsored club, and then you, you, you showcase the cafe. And then in terms of this S, which is the standard, again, just like the last time, the ending was fantastic. And I will repeat, re read it out to you. Take a risk. The worst that could happen is that it doesn't work out. But if it does, you are in for the adventure of a lifetime. That's a great way to give us a parting gift. Well done and congratulations, Christina. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Akin. Thank you for this great evaluation. Appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time to participate. So our second evaluator of the evening is Rafia. Rafia will be evaluating Shoma. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, it's my privilege to be here as an, as an evaluator for Shoma. 
uh, and Shoma, first of all, I would like to congratulate you. You stepped up and you delivered the speech within 10 days of your membership. You just joined us and here you are, you delivered your speech. Congratulations, it was a brave move. Just keep it up, please. Uh, I'm going to evaluate your speech uh, with the method of, uh, with the method of uh, content, delivery and connection. Uh, your speech was very complete, informative and clear. And your, your topic was, was very knowledgeable. A lot of us, we don't know about your country, about your, the city, about your, uh, about your family setup, but you try to share with us. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and, your, and your topic was very clear and it was very comprehensive. We all could understand very well. And for the delivery, you are you impressed me you impressed me with your eye contact throughout the speech you were in you were uh, contact having the eye contact you were not looking here and there so that was wonderful and you was using your hand gestures also time to time and uh, and you were very confident throughout your speech and that was really amazing me that amazed me so that is something and the connection that you were you were kind of interested while you were telling the story while you were telling about your about your childhood about your family and about your USA st uh, stay and about your studies you were kind of very involved and you were very interested and all of us we were kind of uh, kind of listening we were ready to listen what is going to happen next so it was you were kind of engaging all the audience so that is great so no, thank you so much for delivering this, such a nice speech. And one thing that I would like to suggest you, I know this is your first time and with the experience you will get it, the time management. You may have to look for the time and, uh, and I know it comes with experience. The rest of the things were done very well. Thank you so much. Back to you, Mr. Toastmasters. I have a question here. Yeah. Oh, sure. so, uh, so what was my time? Was it like uh, seven minutes? We'll, we'll get a times report at the end of the meeting. The timer will give us oh, a okay. Okay. Yes, we, we'll, we'll get it. So with this, uh, Mr. Timer, did all the um, evaluators qualify? Yes, everybody qualified. Okay, so Mr. Ballot Counter, could you please put the ballots for best evaluator? Did everybody cast their vote for best evaluator? Going once, twice. Thank you very much, Mr. Valor Evaluator. So with this, we are going to pass the baton to our general evaluator to continue on so we can get all the evaluator's reports. Mr. Upai. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, this time is the time for us to call on uh, our functionaries for us to have a report uh, from them. And uh, the first uh, functionary that I would like to invite to give us a uh, high report is uh, the grammarian, Carol. Yeah, Mitch. Carol. You go. Excuse me. I say I have always enjoyed this club and I enjoy listening to all the different accents. That is something that I have always enjoyed, even when I was a little girl. Different people would have different accents and I just thought it was wonderful that I could figure out what they were saying. And in this case, I did and I do. And I, I always make listen as hard as I can to make sure I hear what other people are saying. As re and with regard to that, everyone did well with the use, their use of the language. Some few things did stand out. Akeen has already mentioned the comment that Christina made in closing her discussion that go outside the box, take a risk, and you don't know what will happen, but if something amazing happens, it, it would be a good thing. I have always thought of it as you, if you don't try, 
you won't get anything done. You, if you try, you may be this hero or you may be the goat, but if you don't try, you won't be either one. You won't get anything done. So I really appreciated your comment about taking the risk, Christina, and that you were right that in those of us involved with Toastmasters, we always take a risk because we always have something we wanted to say and perhaps we forgot it or maybe we fluffed up in the middle. So we always put ourselves out there, but if you don't put yourself out there, you won't learn. You learn so much more from your mistakes than you learn from your successes. And getting a good evaluation is one of the most important things we have to help us and help us get better in our speeches. I like your phraseology. You say that planning mitigates risk and it does. When you discussed the arguments that you would make to support your rationale for changing the architect's plan, you were very succinct with your pros and cons. And I thought that was a good, good use of the language. Going outside the box and you will have an adventure of the lifetime. I liked that. Soma, there were some many things that I enjoyed about your speeches. Memorable journey, and it did happen along the way. You took advantage of the memorable things that happened along the way. You discussed the white Christmas was amazing in Iowa, and I'm glad that you got to enjoy it. Cold, but amazingly beautiful. You said on many occasions, you would, one comment you made was, I want to say, and then you would say it. And then you had another time you said, I want to say, and then you would say it. I want to say is a charming phrase, but think about it whenever you're using it, because if you want to say it, say it. Um, excuse me, let me see. I really enjoyed Jorge's comment about your speech when he said, we have all walked in your shoes. That was a really, really good expression. I enjoyed that a lot. And your discussion of your family life and how you, how you came from Kolkata over to Iowa and then to California and then all of the places that you've been and your trip to Big Bend National Park, everything was, was very relatable with the things that, that you said. I think that would be the end of my comments, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you very much, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Gromerian for that uh, report. Mm -hmm. Moving on, uh, I'd like to invite uh, the Alcantar, John Ademo. Can you give us your report? You're mute. Thank you, Mr. Uh, General Evaluator for this opportunity. Uh, here is my account report. Yeah, even though this is my first time, uh, and it gives me an opportunity to start learning to be a good listener. Uh, I'm not sure if I do, you know, the best job, but being for the first time. So here yeah, I have uh, some. Uh, some of those repetitive words uh, from uh, about two of the speakers. I have uh, Christina with two arms. Then once, so oh, you know, I have Soma with four, so, and uh, four uh, arms. Then I have Jessica with two 
Um, so that is all from me. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, John, for that uh, report. This meeting uh, couldn't have started if the time was not 6.30 p.m. And it is the time to invite our timer to give us a report on how we have uh, done with time. Have you? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. I think we were really good with time. So for the speakers who were supposed to be within five to seven minutes. So Christina, you had six minutes, 28 seconds. Soma, you were little up and of course, understandable, this is a icebreaker. So you were somewhere around nine minutes. So your cap was 7.30, but yeah, a little bit more. First time, understandable. Michael, your first Table topics was two minutes, 22 seconds. The second table topics was one minute, 31 seconds. Carol, you were one minute, 41 on your table topics. Rafia, one minute, 10 seconds for your table topics. For evaluators, Akin, three minutes, 20 seconds. And Rafia, two minutes, 12 seconds. Back to you, Mr. General Valley. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Timer. And thank you for helping us uh, with that uh, report. And for me, as the general evaluator, I would like to evaluate uh, the meeting. Uh, our meeting uh, started uh, right on time. And uh, I believe we are doing well to end this meeting also on time. A uh, few things I want to call our attention to is uh, the fact that uh, we were able to fill most of the roles that uh, tonight, maybe we could have had the pleasure of uh, taking up uh, another one more speech, one more prepared speech. So we missed out uh, in filling the role of a prepared uh, speaker. So I want to encourage every one of us to continue to uh, participate, to increase our speaking uh, role. And then again, uh, I realized that we didn't have uh, that of a grammarian, but we were able to feel that uh, before the meeting started. So that was very good. I would rather encourage us to keep on uh, doing all we have to do to make sure that uh, all rules are filled before the meeting. It helps us to ensure that uh, we can also account for people's uh, role and also to help in uh, path, uh, uh, pathways for it to be recorded. Other than that, I believe uh, we had a very good meeting. And uh, tonight we didn't have any guests. I believe that's uh, a job for all of us. Invite your colleagues, invite your friends, let them be part of what we are benefiting here. I would like to turn it back to Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you for that great evaluation and everybody that participated with their evaluations, thank you for your help. So we are perfect on timing. We are actually probably a couple of minutes ahead of time, even though we didn't have a third speech. So I don't know where the time is going, but, but we are right on time. Uh, so this is the time when I am going to pass the control of the meeting back to our um, presiding officer. So we can uh, name all the, the winners of the evening. So as a presiding officer, I will have to thank you everybody for participating. We have a great meeting, but before I let you go, we need to announce the winners for best, best speaker, which we didn't have a competition because Unfortunately, one of our speakers didn't qualify, uh, but for best uh, evaluator and for best staple topic of the evening. So with this, I'm going to let our Sergeant at Arms to provide uh, the winners of the evening. Okay, Christina, you can, you can coordinate it. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go, no, ahead. No, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes. 
So, and the winner is. Yeah. Best speaker award. All right. You can you can go you can say the next one, Jorge. All right. So, but uh, okay, hold on a minute. Uh, but I don't have the list here with me. That's okay. Oh, that's why. Okay. You are. The, you have to say it. You are the sergeant of okay. That's it. You it. Well, and the winner for best table topics is. There you go. Carol. Thank you. You're welcome. Now the best evaluator. And the winner is <laughs> Aki. <laughs> Yay! All right, congratulations to all our win winners of the evening. Thank and you. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you very much for spending two hours on a Wednesday evening with us. Uh, but before I let you go home, uh, Akim, actually our president of the club, started what we call the chat out moment winner, which is basically on every media to find a really outstanding speaker or table topic or anything that went really, really well in the meeting. So I am going to let Christina, our Sergeant at Arms again, to announce the chat of moment winner of the evening. And I got clicky, click happy. It's Soma. 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 <laughs> chat of moment, chat out Soma for her bravery. Mm -hmm. Present 10 days after Thanks. you joined the club, your yeah. first icebreaker. And so that is awesome, Soma. Great, great. That that shows a great commitment from yeah. you to the club and to your commitment for improvement and, and to increase your knowledge and your presentation skills every time. So with this, um, I don't have anything else uh, unless any of the members, if we don't have any guests, guests tonight, I cannot ask what they think about the meeting. But I will, if anybody wants to add anything, yeah, Christina, Christina you can remove share. May, may Carol speak? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I need to rejoin. I, Rafia, will you send me whatever it needs to be done? Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. you. Thank you for not giving me the unpleasant task of coming <laughs> after you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're on mute. Carol, you're on mute. All right, I need to send pay somebody, Rafia. Is it yes, you still? Yes, Rafia, yeah, Rafia will reach out okay. to you. So you you will send me something? Uh, something about my pathway? No, no. No, 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 no uh, about payments. paying, paying it to be a member. So oh, okay, okay, okay. You, you need the link. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so you're going to be renewing your membership, correct? You, you are a member? I am, I am a member now. I will go yeah. and renew. Okay. Thank oh, you. definitely. I'm going to send to all of our uh, members. So definitely, okay. we'll be going through that process soon. Oh, oh okay. okay. I'm yeah, sorry. that's what I was going to say, that uh, maybe okay. you can let us know that your timing for sending us the link, because all of us will need to go through the same thing. Oh, uh, okay. All of us oh. right now, our, our membership dues will be ready for renewal uh, next month, actually. Next month, exactly. And we yeah, need definitely. to make sure that it's in place before the end of the month. Oh, definitely. I'm going to so, send Rafia, you. So what's your timing? Uh, actually, I was thinking to start maybe from next week, from coming weekend. I'm going to start sending the emails and the reminders. OK. And it will have the link as well. OK. And then you can just start giving your dues, start sending your dues. And for officers, we have the advantage that you can go straight to TMI website and you can maybe just go and give you know, the TMI uh, views straight there. And then maybe I can send you the link of uh, $15 for, uh, for club dues. So that way, you know, we will not be paying a little bit more, uh, you know, the charges that Squid takes from us. So it will be less. So I can, if you if you are agree, then we can do that. So we can split the officers, uh, their amount. So forty five can go straight to our to the TMI, and the rest can uh, can come to our club straight. 
with the link, with $15 link? Yes, as long as uh, there will be no error. I've never done it via TI, TI website. I always okay. pay the treasurer. Okay. So if, whichever one you prefer, just send okay. me the let's, link let's that try you use and I'll use it. Exactly. No, definitely. I will send you the link. Okay. Then I think we'll talk about that more. All right. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and uh, excellent. for th this is the second, this is our last meeting for the month of August. Mm -hmm. uh, Rafia, who is our treasurer, is going to be our presiding officer for the two meetings in September. And then, mm -hmm. Rafia, note that uh, as the presiding officer, you are going to make sure you remind who is going to be the Toastmaster for our next meeting. Let's start there because yes. we've got uh, a little bit of time. Any yeah. volunteer, Toastmaster, for our next club meeting? Yes. What, what about one of our new members wants to volunteer for Toastmasters? Okay. Uh, mm. Christina, are you ready for that? Uh, I can. I can try. I, oh yeah, I, no, you do. Well. Try, you yeah. do more than try. Not, you, you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, send me an email or reach out to Avi, Upai, uh, Ohe, even Carol. Please reach out to us, and we will walk you through. And Rafia is a veteran now. Uh, yeah, it took it took time for us to get out there, but she's a veteran now. So you can reach out to Rafia as well. So okay. you, you've got a number of options. And, and John John will be presenting his icebreaker at the next meeting. He, uh -huh. he ah, is right. Okay, that good. Is, that's good. His icebreaker. That is right. And, 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 and in solidarity with you, I'll do a presentation that evening, John. Okay. If, if you think that that will help you, I'll, I'll present with you. That's excellent. Then who else is going to yeah. plan to speak during our next meeting? Anyone? Michael. Only one. Michael, you're very quiet. Go three. Yeah, I can I can speak. Don't worry. Okay. I will okay. if I speak during the next meeting, I may be completing my level five of my fourth pathway. Okay. That's right. Yeah, you're almost there. You're yeah. almost completing number, the I'll be completing number four project. Um, wow. So I will, um, yeah, so I'll be ready for my second DTM once I'm able to have enough district uh, hours. That, that's the other thing I want to, to tell all the new members and the all members yes. <laughs> that we need to accomplish our education goals. We need to complete our levels. Absolutely. And if we don't do the speeches, we won't be able to complete those levels. So yeah. please make sure that at least once a month, yeah. you have one of, one of your speeches that you need to complete those levels. Yeah. So at the end of the year, we will have the goals that we need to complete. Yeah. Or we'll be in trouble if we don't do it. Yeah. And our president won't be happy. <laughs> I definitely, I will not be. Now, talking about that, people ask me sometimes, they say, Akin, where are you right now in your pathways? And I'll tell them. And they say, how did you know that just like that? I have a simple Excel workbook that I used to try because I present at different clubs. So I have, uh, I belong to three clubs, but this is where my points go this year, other than the DTM that went somewhere else. But this is where my points have been going this year. And my VP, uh, the uh, VP knows that. The reason I know where I am at any point in time is I maintain a workbook. So mm -hmm. each speech that I deliver, I would, the speech title, what it was, the club that I spoke at, the date, everything is in there. So if you want a copy of that, I can send you my life workbook and I can send you a blank workbook. I, I don't know, there's nothing to hide there. So uh, again, it's something that I share with my VPEs from time to time, that way they know what I'm doing. When I say I'm done with something, they can look through that in case we are audited. Right. So it's, very, it's, it's very straightforward. So if you want to know how I log in my speeches and other activities, let me know. I'll, I'll send you a Zoom invite. I'll walk you through what I've got. Hopefully, it will encourage at least one person. Right. Yeah, no, that, that would be very useful. And I, I can also share a, a spreadsheet that I got from one of the training um, that I did recently uh, for, for BPEs, a spreadsheet that you can do for the club, use for the club, or use individually to keep track of your speeches, too, and what your levels and where you are in the Toastmaster pathway. So I, I can share with the rest of the group. Okay. That will come okay. very useful for everybody. Very good. And uh, um, on a final note, Mr. VPM, how are we doing? Any message from the stable of uh, Vice President of Membership, Mr. Avi? 
not yet we have reached out to a number of folks they were supposed to join us this evening i think some work priority might have taken up their time but then we are looking good we have two new members including soma and john here and two more folks who are filling out their membership form so i think we we look good excellent thank you very much and talking about looking good uh with respect to uh club officer training round one I can confirm that as of last night, because of the participation by Avi and Rafia, we, we've logged in that DCP. The only officer that I reach out to right now, if we just want to have a bragging right of seven for seven, is uh, Anthony. So if anybody is able to reach out to Anthony, you can remind him. If he has time this Saturday, that's the last chance. The only and thing is, he's, I understand he's very, he's very busy with some work projects. Yeah, and, yeah, that's what I have. Okay. So but but non-participation is not going to affect our DCP for this round. That's the good news. So, and then once round two starts, I will let everyone know as well. You all will probably hear about it. And then let's go for it again and lock in that DCP, one after the other. It's very easy to achieve all these DCPs because you know what they are. You just need to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the thing. Uh, that's really all I've got. Any other... Uh, yes, I, I still owe you the um, our our um, ah, the club the club um, in the new format. I forgot oh, the, the club success plan. Yeah, the success plan in the new format. I, I need yeah, to. Yeah, that's fine. I've been very busy at work and very busy on the weekend, but I'll do it. I'll try to get it done this weekend. Okay, that that would be good. Because I'm doing something similar too for Division M actually right now. Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll transfer it to the new program. I'm transferring all the information to the new template. But yeah, so that's that's fine. So thank you also very much. I mean, this is how a meeting should be run. I really appreciate all the people who jumped in at the 11th hour. Thank you so much, Carol. I mean, you can imagine what this meeting will have been like without you. So thank you for showing up. That was very good. And Soma, you see, thank that's you. what it takes to present. Just don't wait again. Don't wait too long. Do it again and again and again. And I know that John is good to go for the next meeting. So that's great. That's really how we, we all need to present, evaluate, speak, function. That is how we build ourselves up. Because at the end of the day, remember what I said at the beginning of the year, I'd really appreciate if each one of us can understand where we are today. And by June 30th, I'd like you to be able to look back and say, okay, I did this, I did that, I achieved this, I achieved that, I'm better in this area. Because if we're not better, we're just marking time here. And it's, it's not good for anybody. The goal is for us to be better. And the best we can do for ourselves is participate, participate, participate. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Have a Thank great you. evening and I'll see you in two weeks. And don't forget Thank to you log so your hours. Don't forget to log your hours in PMI. The two hours yes, for if you are PMP uh, certified, so please use this hour, log it in. Thank yeah. you all very much. Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Have a good Bye -bye. night. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Everyone.